Jimmy, we're here with one of the uh, KH310As from Neumann, uh, the studio monitors that are making us evaluate our lifestyle choices. Yeah, this is the left side one. The right mm. side one's still in my studio where it's been for the last week and mm. hopefully will remain with its friend for another couple of weeks. Now, your studio, which we're both very familiar with, has got lovely monitoring. Yes. Uh, and I've always been I quite jealous it of it until we turned a pair of these on. Yeah. Now, I was hearing things in tracks I know very well that I'd never heard before, particularly details in reverb tales and also uh, material uh, particularly to do with high-end uh, transients. Uh, but that's where the you know, listening experience doesn't stop there. These are just beautiful from the bottom to the top. And uh, what's some of the specs that we're looking at here? Yeah, okay, so 34 hertz to 21 kilohertz, mm. plus or minus three, they say, but mm. it seems pretty linear to me. Yeah, like it seems I'd agree. pretty flat. Mm. And, and I think there's there's probably some fairly beautiful phase coherence going on. Mm -hmm. um, we've got various tweakies to roll off the low and mid and mm -hmm. roll off or give the little high end a kick up. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a calibrated output listening level switch, so mm -hmm. you switch it to what you want your SPL to be at zero dB. In. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Uh, you can dim the front logo. Oh yeah, that's probably the least useful feature. <laughs> um, in fact, that's the first time I've tried it. Uh, we've got an eight and a quarter inch woofer mm -hmm. with 150 watt amp driving it, a three inch dome, uh, sorry, a three inch mid, yep. and a one inch dome tweeter. Mm -hmm. Each of those has a 70 watt amp on yep. it. So it doesn't sound like a lot of power, but by God, they go loud. It really does feel like it when you're sitting in front of it, though. It's um, it's just efficient, beautiful, incredibly detailed, incredibly coherent, unported. Yeah, I actually I really, like that. I really like unported. Yeah, I, I think that, that... I don't know how they make it go so low. Well, it, ta it takes away any kind of weird box resonance or any like, I don't know, like no one note jumping out, you know. Fluttering and flapping no. about. No, look, it's really, really it well just, designed and well built. It just gets on with business. And yeah. Then, it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I was particularly hearing the details, like things like transients for kick drums, whether mm. we're listening to like a jazz kit or a full-on EDM, you know, artificial synth kick drum, you could hear the, you know, the transients in them, which you normally can't hear. I and think it, it also showed up a number of mixes, which I thought were good. Yeah, yeah it turned be out to be not. Quite flat and boring, yeah. yeah. So, um, mm. Look, I think at the, the end of the day, it, it shows stuff up for what it is. You know, mm. instruments sound like what they are. Yeah. You know, you don't really probably think of a snare drum or a, but something mm. like that as having a lot of character but, yeah. but you know what's there is is really brought out and accentuated and things like you know an upright acoustic bass it sounds like an upright acoustic bass yeah yeah now um, at six grand a pair totally worth it oh totally yeah if your totally. budget extends to it do it look my budget doesn't extend to it <laughs> no I'm thinking about it so yeah 100% yeah brilliant